everyone, welcome to this video on the basics of sigma notation. So this is like a video for if you've never seen this before, this is like really just starting from the beginning. So we're going to talk about things that look like this, kind of how to interpret this. I have other videos where we'll talk about more advanced things that we can do with sigma notation, but this is just covering the basic idea. If you've never watched my videos before, highly recommend you pause and try the examples. Also, there are free guided notes available at divideandconquermath.com. So let's just get right into it. What is sigma notation? So sigma notation looks like this, and it's basically telling you to sum up a bunch of things. That, that's really it. That's what sigma notation is. Now, it's called sigma notation because this is the Greek letter sigma, and then this part here is what's known as the index. So this is your index, and so we have really, this is telling you the start, where to start your sum, and this is telling you where to end your sum. Then finally, this part here, this is really a formula for the terms in the sum. So the way that this would look, if I had something like k equals uh, 1, let's say I go from k equals 1 to 3. So basically then you would have your terms starting from, you'd figure out what the first term is, you'd figure out what the second term is, you'd figure out what the third term is. So this is what I kind of mean. This is telling you where to start, where to stop and then you would just sum up that many terms. Okay, so let's just take a look at a really basic example then with an actual formula. So this is the most basic example we can really start with. So this would be your formula, and so basically now as you're going through it, you're just going to um, increase each term by one, right? So we're gonna start at one, so the way that this would work is I would start at one, then my next term would be two, my next term would be three, and then four, and then I just have to go through and actually sum that up. So this just equals 10. Okay, so this next one, I want you to actually try this, and I, I just want to kind of get you used to playing around with this. So notice I, I messed with the index here. Also, I changed the letter I. Sometimes I use I or K, or you can use a different letter, so it doesn't, I, I just don't want you to be locked into the thought that it just has to be a K. So this is what the, the format of your terms has to look like. So starting with i equals 3, you should be able to figure out the first term. Then you'll go to i equals 4, and you'll figure out what the next term looks like. And you continue this all the way until you get to i equals 7. So just go ahead and write down the structure of the terms. Pause the video, hit play when you're ready. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and work with this. So this is going to be, I'll put like these square brackets around. So this will be 2 times 3 minus 1. So there's my first one. There's where i equals 3. Now I move on to the next one. So now I need to move on to i equals 4. So there's the structure of the next one. And then I'll move on to 5. So it looks like this. And then I'll continue on. So let's see. Then I'll do 6. And then finally we end at 7. And that's the last one that we need. So again, you knew the start and the stop based off of this notation here. And so this is what you need to sum up then. So then it's really just a matter of, of sitting down and figuring this out. So for instance, this first one, so 2 times 3 um, is 6, minus 1 is 5. This next one, this will be 2 times 4 is 8, minus 1 is 7. And if I just continue down the line, so let's see, I get plus 9, um, plus 11, plus 13. So there's everything that I would have to add up, and if I work that all out, I will just get that this equals 45. So there's kind of the idea behind that sum. Okay, so I have just one more, kind of a weird looking one. So notice now that k actually ended up in the exponent, and so this, this is just a thing that can kind of happen. You can have your, your k's end up wherever. So I would once again recommend that you just kind of write down the structure of all these terms. You start with k equals 1 after you filled in everything, then move on to k equals 2. So write this out. Um, do the sum, hit play when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, so if I actually write all of this out, so here's, I, I want to just be nice and thorough. So there's my first term. Here's my second term. Oops, this should be 2 plus 1, sorry. 2 plus 1. And then here's my next term. So this will be 3 plus 1, and then multiply that times 3, and then I got to Take a little space down here, so this will be negative 1, 4 plus 1 times 4. So when you actually figure out what these exponents are, so this comes out to negative 1 
squared times one, this is negative one cubed times two, this is negative one to the fourth times three, and then I could put this in negative one to the fifth times four. So really what this is doing is it's just making the signs of the sum alternate. So all of, uh, so negative one of the seconds, that'll be positive, this will be negative, this will be positive and negative. So what this will look like then is I have one minus two plus three minus four. So it's just an alternating um, signed sum. And then again, there's nothing special about this. You just add everything up and you get negative two. Okay, so there's kind of the basic idea. So now I just want to add on a few rules and I would recommend that you actually write these down. So just certain things that you are allowed to do to sums. So the first one is the sum rule. So if you have like two terms that are being um, added together or subtracted, you can break up those sums by that operation. You can break up sums by addition or by subtraction. So sometimes this will be handy. So again, you might want to pause the video and write those down. And then also I have these other sums, uh, these other rules. So again, maybe pause, write these down. So this is saying if I have some constant C that's being multiplied by a term, I can just kind of factor that C out and, and do the sum and then just at the end multiply it by that C. And then this one's actually very handy. If you have a sum that is just a singular number, you can figure out what the value of this sum is by just taking N times uh, that, that constant C. So let's talk about how to actually use this. So looking at this um, first sum, so what I could do here is I could say, well, I wanna break this up actually into two pieces. So instead of having just a K plus five, I have the sum of K and then I have the sum of just five. And the reason why I do this is because this plus five, I can, I can calculate this pretty easily just by using this constant value value rule. And then all I have to figure out is actually summing up these pieces here. So it actually does, it can like simplify kind of the work that you have to do. Earlier, you might remember we did this sum and it was just like a lot of work to kind of write all of these terms out. So you can actually shorten the amount of work that you have to do by playing around with some of those rules. So let's see, if I write, write out this part here, so I'll, I'll go ahead and write this out. This is one plus two plus three. And then if I wanna write out how to calculate this part here, this is just three times five by that rule. So you can see how that kind of just simplifies our life a little bit. So that comes out to six plus 15, and so then that'll equal 21, so, so there you go. So it can just kind of shorten the amount of work that you have to do. So why don't you pause the video here and just try this one. Hit play when you're ready to see the solution. So in this case, what I wanna do is I'm, I'm gonna factor out the negative three. Sometimes my sigmas don't look as beautiful as I wish they would. Okay, so I've got that term there and then I'm also gonna break this up like this. So then I can just use that constant value rule here and calculate this sum, that'll be a lot faster. So if I once again kind of break this up, so once again, I'll, I'll use this color just to indicate this sum. So this is one plus two plus three plus four. And then this other one, this will be now four times two. So there's kind of all the work that I have to do. So this comes out to negative three times 10 minus eight. So that's negative 30 minus eight. So that's ultimately gonna equal negative 38 for my sum. So that's kind of the, just the basic idea behind this notation. Um, so I have other videos where I talk about more advanced sums. So but that'll cover it for this particular video. So thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in another video.